Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Mithun Mohan KK. I'm working as a third year junior resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis in BDGMC, Latu. I'm today presenting my paper on the topic, study of role of high frequency ultrasonography in evaluation of ocular lesions. My aims and objectives were to study the role of B-scan ultrasonography in ocular diseases in differentiating intraocular and extraocular diseases and to correlate the final diagnosis with ultrasonography diagnosis. Patients with symptoms related to eye and orbit form an important share of general OPD. Early diagnosis and treatment of these conditions remains the mainstay of management. It presents a formidable challenge for both the radiologist and the ophthalmologist owing to the complicated anatomical structure of the orbit and its contents. Ultrasonography provides a detailed uh, cross-section anatomy of the entire globe and an excellent topography visualization combined with the real-time display of the moving organ, which is critical in its ability to localize and characterize the pathology. B-mode real-time ultrasonography is known as hazardous, atraumatic and invaluable in the evaluation of orbitocular lesions, especially in the presence of opaque media which, when there is a suspicion of intraocular mass. Vitreoretinal diseases are the most common indications of ultrasonography imaging of the posterior segment. Although most conditions of the posterior segment can be viewed directly in situations where the media opacity is there, uh, for example, because of vitreous hemorrhage, echography allows for evaluation of the vitreous retina and choroid that otherwise would be impossible. Using ultrasound, it is possible to identify, evaluate, and follow numerous posterior segment conditions. This is the image showing normal anatomy of the orbit, which include bony orbit and the orbital soft tissues. The sonography anatomy of the orbit uh, is like the eye is the easiest object to visualize within the orbit as its fluid content and superficial position make it ideal for ultrasound examination. The lens is visualized an oval, visualized as an oval high reflective structure with intralenticular echoes varying from none to highly reflective depending upon the amount of cataract may, may be seen. Vitreous is acoustically clear but can show low reflective echoes in older people. Retina choroid and sclera are seen as a high, single high reflective structure. Retina, its anterior surface is clearly identifiable on ultrasound examination but the posterior surface merges with the choroid. The thickness is about 0.4 millimeter near the entrance of the optic nerve but reduces to point one millimeter at the aura serrata. Choroid is a thin erectile vascular layer and the sclera uh, displays a higher reflectivity than the choroid. Optic nerve is seen as hypoechoic band starting at the scleral zone and extending posteriorly and medially. Extraocular muscles appear fusiform hypoechoic spaces between retrobulbar fat and occasional uh, low amplitude echoes from the orbital bone. Retrobulbar fat is hyperechoic compared to other structures and uh, helps in uh, and uh, well demarked. Uh, and lesion within the orbit are well demarcated by this fact. <clears throat> Transverse and longitudinal positions were kept for probe uh, and for the uh, better visualization of the globe. The common ocular pathologies include cataract changes in the lens, vitreous hemorrhages, retinal breaks and detachments, which include regmatogenous traction and combined traction regmatogenous or exurative and choroidal detachment. Other pathologies include asteroid hyalosis, endophthalmitis, Persistent fetal vasculature. Common ocular tumors include choroidal melanoma, retinoblastoma, tumors of the optic nerve, lacrimal gland tumors, and lymphoma. Orbital mass lesions include cavernous hemangioma, mucosal, and dermal cyst. Orbital inflammations include myositis, Day's disease, and orbital pseudotumors. These are the images of the patients which came to our department with ocular complaints. First of all, vitreous hemorrhage, uh, which shows lower level echoes. Then next is the vitreous detachment with well-defined thick echogenic V-shaped retinal folds. Next is retinoblastoma, which shows uh, internal vascularity and calcium bokeh within. And next is persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, which, show, which on Doppler shows uh, signals from the posterior hyaluronic artery within. Next is thysis bulbi, which shows the deformed globe with carbonyl calcification and cataract changes are seen in the next picture. Next is endophthalmitis uh, with the uh, irregular ocular outline and next picture is that of optic nerve head drusen which shows calcium focus at the optic nerve head. Next is dermosis which shows well-defined cystic lesion showing multiple lower level internal echoes and next is ethmoidal mucosal which shows well-demarcated <coughs> cystic lesion causing expansion and thinning of the ethmoidal signs. Next is lid diapsis and next is optic nerve glioma which shows uh, well-defined hypoechoic fusiform lesion in the intraconal compartment. The study design was of a prospective cross-sectional study and sample size was kept at 50. And uh, patients with ocular trauma were excluded from the study. And the uh, examination was done uh, with closed eyelid after application of coupling gel utilizing contact method 
linear high frequency probe of 7.5 to 12 megahertz of ge logic p9 ultrasound system was used for the study and longitudinal and transverse axis scans were performed uh, the distinction between ocular and extraocular pathology was made in 100% of cases the overall sensitivity specificity positive and negative relative values and accuracy of the ultrasonography for the diagnosis of ocular pathologies were 96% 100% 100% 95 and 98% respectively with a p value of 0.0165 the sensitivity specificity positive and negative relative value and accuracy for the extraocular pathologies were 95% 100% 100% 96.7% 98 respectively these are the tabulated form of extraocular pathologies uh, which included about 20% and out of which 19% 19%, 19 per, uh, cases were diagnosed accurately on ultrasound these are the tabulated form of ocular, ocular pathologies uh, there are there were around 30 patients with ocular pathologies out of which 29 was diagnosed correctly. And uh, these are the extra uh, classification and distribution of extraocular masses. And three cases were acoustically cystic, seven were acoustically solid, and three were acoustically infiltrative, and none were acoustically angiomatous. And there were a total of 30 cases in the ocular space with four in anterior segment, 26 in posterior segment of the globe. Of the six vitreous hemorrhage cases, one was missed on ultrasound. And uh, 29 out of 30 cases were correctly diagnosed. Uh, 20 cases in extraocular phase, which uh, 40 percent were in extraconal, 20 percent intraconal, 20 percent conal, and 10 percent both intra and extraconal, and 10 percent preceptal compartments. One case of hemangioma was falsely diagnosed as obtaining a tumor on ultrasound. Out of 20 cases, 19 were correctly diagnosed by ultrasound. Ultrasound was 100 percent effective in differentiating ocular and extraocular pathologies. Uh, the overall sensitivity and specificity. Uh, are 96.67, 100%, 100%, 95%, and 98% respectively. In 33 cases, clinical and laboratory investigations form the basis for confirmation and sonological diagnosis. Surgery followed by histopathological examination formed the gold standard for diagnosis in 14 cases. Orbital pathologies observed in our study were predominant in the fifth decade with a near uniform general predilection. Involvement of right eye was seen in 50% of cases, with 18% of cases having bilateral involvement. Commonest ocular pathology was vitreous hemorrhage followed by retinal detachment. Commonest extraocular pathology was hemangioma followed by Graves' disease. These are the uh, st uh, study uh, com being compared with other studies which were con uh, conducted in a national level and uh, at an international level. Uh, coming to conclusion, B mode real time ultrasound uh, is non hazardous, traumatic, and invaluable in the evaluation of orbitocular lesions, especially in the presence of opaque media when uh, there is a suspicion of an intraocular mass. Ultrasound is the only practical method of obtaining images of the posterior segment of the eye when light conducting media is opaque. Ultrasound contributes more to tissue diagnosis than to CT or MR as they cannot scan in real time and are not comparable with ultrasound for spatial resolution. Sonological diagnosis correlated very well with the final diagnosis established by higher modalities follow-up and histopathology. I express my sincere gratitude towards uh, all the faculty members of the VDGM Silatur to Dr. Mahesh Kadam sir and Dr. Atush Kombar sir. These are the list of publications and books which helped me for conducting the study. With this, I conclude my topic. Thank you.